U.S. Rep. Todd Rakita of Indiana. Good morning. Hey, great to be with you guys. Um, did you hear what the president said yesterday? You know, I did. You want to hear it again? Yes. Let's hear it again. Let's let everybody hear it. I am sorry that they uh, you know, are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. Yeah, so, so basically the president, he apologized for Obamacare. Kind of. We have to make sure that they uh, are not feeling as if they've been betrayed by an effort that uh, is designed to help them. I don't know. Do you buy his apology? Run through the little <laughs> maze, you little white mice. These are exactly. this is the this is the liberal, um, the liberal fantasy. We're going to take human beings, make them our liberal fantasy lab rats, send them through the maze, and figure stuff out. Well, guess yeah. what? It's my hu- it's our human bo- it's our bodies for God's sake. Yeah. Why don't you just leave us alone? You know, there's one thing. But no, you're right. The liberal mantra can't can't accept that because at the at the heart of this law. And by the way, John Lawrence, thanks for having me on again. Sure, I, I, Good I to appreciate see you. it very much. I um, want to hear what you have to say. About. At the heart of this law, and it's really every every law that's promulgated by liberals is this idea that we know better than you. We, this elitist subset of overseers, know better than you as individuals how to run your lives. So be quiet and eat your spinach. Right. Right. I mean, that's exact. That's exactly what this is, and you see it in the apology. You know, I, I, I'm not here to, as my wife would say, I'm not one that should be judging apologies. But <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, uh, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I, I took from that uh, comment, that apology, so to speak. That, I'm sorry that you don't understand how good for you this is, but you will. <laughs> eventually and, and so he's but not apologizing he, for the law he's not apologizing for what he did he's barely apologizing for the website it's a tacit it's sort of like one of those non-apologies really because he's not he's not he's not discussing the problem did right. he come with an, a, a solution did he say here's how i'm going to fix this thing he didn't no and he, and, didn't. And he didn't apologize for lying right and he did lie mm-hmm the not federal, mislead. Yeah, he, not, I'm sorry yeah. if you were offended. He, no, he and lied. his people knew it was printed in the Federal Register. Their own estimate showed that this could affect negatively over 93 million people. 93, up to 93 million people, and their estimates from 2010 uh, were that uh, 93 million people could lose the health insurance that they themselves picked, that they want. And Todd, are your constituents calling you like we've had other representatives on, other congressmen on, and people are calling, they're having cancellations, they're having problems, their the rates right. are going up? I have several letters in hand. We, we put a call out asking, hey, send us your letters. We didn't really have to call out for it. They were coming in. And yeah, yeah we're, we're seeing this. We're asking for pictures now. And it'll be interesting to see if people are willing to stand up that far by sending a photo of themselves in mm-hmm. uh, so we can put real faces to mm-hmm. what's happening here. Uh, the fact of the matter is, um, our our healthcare system isn't perfect. I do think it's because it's, it, you know, at least was uh, a private market based for the most part. You know, we had Medicaid, we have Medicare, uh, but the private insurance part of it was in fact free market. It's based on a doctor patient relationship. It was patient centered. It was consumer driven, and and now Obamacare is going to try to take that vestige of it away. And ultimately, and why this law is so insidious is that it's going to ultimately lead to rationing and single payer. Single payer being the government gets to pay for all this, all your health care, and when they get to pay for it, they get to decide what you get and what you don't. Well, think of it this way, though. I'm trying to think of the advantages if you're in public office. Uh, when it goes that way, and the government basically, we just, I'm Greek, uh, American of Greek descent. Yeah. So w- once we start playing the mand- the bouzouki music, because that's how our economy is being run, that's how we're doing everything, um, then you're going to have a bunch of people lining up outside your office saying, hey, uh, Congressman Rokita, the doctor said they would get my hip ready in, uh, you know, 18 months. Hmm. Can you help me uh, cut that red tape? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to, Right. And now those people are beholden to their government even more, Correct. subjects of their government even more. And that's exactly the opposite, sir, of what this country was founded on. And right. we're losing it if we don't stand up. And that's why I appreciate coming on this show and coming on in person, because these are important 
ideas that we have to not let the American people forget. But and, to, I'm sorry. and not even to wait till it becomes like a possible single payer system. It's already happening now. Yeah. When you go on and you and you let's say you were one of these people who lost your Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example, or even if it's Cigna, United, Humana, I won't single someone out. You lose your health care. They're forcing you into a new plan because you don't qualify for a subsidy on the health care exchange. And in that new plan, you're paying more because you're getting services you don't need. The case right. of a 60 year old man who's getting maternity leave. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. it's just ridiculous. Once this thing goes through, and if it goes through, and people uh, are beholden to their government, because that's what the liberals want. They want you on your knees, begging mm-hmm. your 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 politicians to help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't go back, will we? Well, you know, we've had the same scenario in other areas. You know, this government can it, it continues to get bigger. I, you know, I, I take the president somewhat at his word, and, and even Axelrod, if you can believe it, at his word when he, when he says, you know, the president, when the IRS scandals were going in, by the way, they're, they're still being investigated. We have Benghazi. We have all these other scandals. When the president says, you know what, I don't really don't know what those bureaucrats were doing. There's some truth to that in the sense that the government is so big, I wouldn't blame him for not knowing <laughs> so many hundreds of thousands of bureaucrats. I don't know. I used to run five bureaucracies when I was Indiana Secretary of State. We ran it on 1987 levels, f- funding levels. We did a real good job with it, I feel. Uh, but when a government is that big, as this federal government is, uh, there is no possible way you can control it. So it's not just the politicians. It's not just the elected politicians, John. It's these unelected, nameless, faceless bureaucrats who... Uh, have more power over us, power over us as well. Congressman Todd Rakita, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, good to be with you.